Hi, Tiffle Dude here, and today I want to introduce you to the best PDF reader for 2024. And by best, I mean it's fast, unlike Foxit Reader. It doesn't slow your computer down, it opens documents quickly, and most importantly, it offers features which no other PDF offers on free versions. Here are some examples. You can open a blank page by clicking Ctrl plus N, or this button here. It will optically recognize any text with its OCR function. And there are stamps available for free, as well as an accounting calculator. You can also add a QR code detailing any website or email. If you point your camera at this code, you will be sent directly to my YouTube website and finally, it gives you the ability to split the view of any page, either vertically or horizontally. There's the horizontal and there's the vertical. This is very useful for when you're teaching online and sharing the screen view of your PDF. Now those are the free functions, but this is the only PDF reader that allows you to use and play with its full professional version of editing and creating tools indefinitely. However, when you go to save such editing, it will place a tiny stamp on the top corners of the page. And for this, there's even a workaround to at least hide these stamps, which I will show you later. Now some of the unique features of the paid for version or stamped version are the ability to embed audio files. And that's just an example. You can also flatten comments whereby if you do a signature or something, these things are still movable, but we can flatten them so nobody can move them. You can make your own form. You can crop pages, and this version actually allows you to get rid of the outer edges, because often when you crop with other PDF readers, they don't crop it totally. They leave the white edges in case you want it later. This one will absolutely delete it. You can resize documents. When you put images together to make a PDF, Often they could be large like this one, which is over 400 times 800. You can get it down to A4. You can compare documents. And I will show you an example of a student's essay alongside a corrected version of it, as done by me using the AI feature on Foxit Reader. See the link below of my video on how I did this. Finally, there are three types of OCR. Obviously, you can do the searchable image function, and that's free. But with the professional version, you can actually edit the text images. As you can see here, they're a lot clearer, a lot crisper than this one. And then you can edit the text, keeping the background colors. Or you can do find page content, where it will actually, as you can see here, remove all the background colors and just leave you with the text which you can print and use for your students. And don't worry about these other bits because you can just delete the pink area. Everything is a, a box you can delete and I'll show you how to do that later. The first thing we need to do is download it. Now, unfortunately, there's only a version for Windows. Sorry, Mac users, but it's worth getting use of an old Windows PC because this program is amazing. Now you can choose between an installation version or a portable version, which will allow you to use it on any school or work PC that is protected, as it will run from your USB pen drive. And that's another thing Max cannot do. To see how to install this, I will leave a link to this PDF in the comments area below. Note that if you do decide to buy it eventually, it's only $72 for life, which is by far the cheapest deal around. Now, when you click on your preferred version, you will be taken to this page. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, you'll be downloading it. Open your downloads folder and install it. Here are the steps you need to follow. 
So we'll just click next, next, complete version, next, install, and then finish and launch the program. As soon as you open the program, you will see that you have a choice of two interfaces, the ribbon interface and the classic interface. To switch between them, you need to use the UI option button in the top right here. The ribbon interface I use primarily when I want to crop and resize documents using the organize tabs here, or if I want to uh, embed an audio or video under the comments tab. While the classics interface here is used when teaching online or editing live in a more general sense as all the tools are much easier to find and available right away. You can see here I've highlighted many of the functions which are free to use and more readily available on the classic interface. Here I just want to introduce you to some of the tools you can use when you're teaching online. If like me you have one of these tablets where you can use a pen and write on it then you know you can simply click here which is what I do a lot of and I can write hello and I can write answers if I have any ideas how do you spell this I can write the ideas here also by left clicking this I've got a pen button and if I click it it just deletes what I did next I would jump to the highlighting tool as that's one of the most prominent ones I do the you can highlight text so long as it's been OCR'd. I will be showing you this document which I want to use and you can see I, I can highlight words using the highlighter and because we're on this version it's much better than being on the ribbon version because here notice if I do highlight I can say you know what I want to do orange now uh, now I want to quickly change to pink and you have that ability whereas if you go on the ribbon version and you do the comments you click on the highlight and now to change it I have to go either right click here and I've got only a choice of four or I go to format and then I have all my myriad of colors and it's a lot of messing around going from format back to the comments page especially if you use an interactive whiteboard or if you're doing this live and you want to be quick um, so like with the pencil again it's blue I can't change the color I'd have to right click or go into formatting and do the pen width and everything it's it's really not worth it so much better to do it this way where i can change thickness of the pen the color of the pen and everything else and note the keep selected item this is useful if you're drawing say squares where you draw one square you can draw another if i kept it not selected notice it's disappeared I have to click on the square again, unselect it, and now it's gone back to the hand tool. So if I click a square, and it's gone back to the hand tool. Note also, if you want to change the color, it will permanently stay this color. So if I go here, now if I change the color, let's say I want to change the color of this to green, Okay, it's green but if I go back to this square it's blue again so one of the things I want to introduce you to is the properties where you can change all these properties for your liking now to do this you must click on the item first so I clicked on it first and now I can change the properties to let's say orange and now if I click it and say keep selected I will just do orange squares so delete all that and the same goes for the arrows the arrows will be continuous and red but when you click on the actual arrow you have the choice of keep selected or a different color and the same goes for the typewriter 
The typewriter is a little more difficult in order to change the font. Here you have, I don't like this font, Korean new. I prefer, um, say, Arial. But the problem is, if I go to type again, it's there. So what you have to do is click on the typewriter and there's no option to change the type of font. So what you have to do is right click and go to comment palette style. And here you get, this is kind of the properties page. So here I can say, you know what? I don't want Korea new. I want uh, it to be Arial. And I want it to be blue always. So now when I close out, and let's say I've, I've done an arrow, and now I want to write something, there you can see I'm writing an Arial in blue and the selected size font you want. So don't forget the properties uh, only when you click on the actual box, then you can change the properties. Here's another button for it. So if I went typewriter and click properties here, you can see they jump out at the side and I can change it back to um, black. And now if I close the properties, I can write black again. Now the text box here is a brilliant tool. It has many functions, one of which can be just hiding an image which you don't want to print. So now you can click quickly go to print and there you can see it will not print the image. However, there is a red edge to it, as you notice, but this can be gotten rid of just by going to the point and saying zero points. And now you have this white box. But remember, if you want to do that permanently, if you want to remove the um, edge permanently, then you need to click on it first. Where is it here? Click on it first, click zero. And now every time I make a box, there will be no edge to it. And I can hide things such as, well, let's see, for instance, this, this gray area, why would you want to print that? That's a, a lot of wasted ink. And so they're great for that kind of thing. Another trick you can do is if you wanted this picture, but you just wanted it small, you can simply use the snapshot tool. You simply click that and I can copy this area. See, it made a snapshot. Then I click control V and you can see an image has been made, which I can then make smaller. So what you could do in fact, is use the text box to hide this large uh, picture. Now, when you right click it, you flatten it. So what, what that means is if I put this picture on top, um, every can, everything can still be moved. So you could leave it like this and that's fine. Uh, but if you don't want other people to move it, which they can do and delete it, then you need to flatten it. But flattening will um, mean, you can see here there's a market tool, it will mean you'll get a demo stamp on it. So if I say yes, flatten, you can see now I can't move it. I can still move this one, but I can't move this white one. But a demo stamp will be placed there later, which I, as you can see, we can cover up with this very same tool. Here's the text box. And now I just make it big and on here as well. Go to my hand tool and you can see they've disappeared. They've not really, because if you click on this here, you can see it will take me to the website where you can download it. So that's a way to get around having those stamp tools. Now I'm just going to control Z this and that will remove that threaten of a stamp. So I won't have a stamp, but I have my images. Remember, the first image down is the background. So if I move this here and then this here, you can see the second image goes on top of the first image. So it's always best to make this 
and then move this on it afterwards. Now the snapshot tool here can also be useful if you want to make your activity more interactive. Often I give my PDFs to the students so they can use it at home. And here, what we can do is we can, if we zoom in closer, we get a better picture. And then I do this, control V. And as you can see, I can move it directly on top. And what this means is I can later say, okay, what word is here? Okay, let's put that there. And what's important is the closer you are, the better the picture. If I was to do this from far away, like this, say, okay, let's take a snapshot of this. Well, when I do control V, you can see the word is not that good. It's not that good. So the closer you are, the better. Uh, also, you can do not just one, control V, here, now it's highlighted, I can do Control C, copy, click anywhere here, Control V, that's one, Control V, that's two, click away, Control V, that's three. And now I have lots of them I can use. So I leave that to your imagination, how you would use that to make interactive activities especially if you're using an interactive board. Lastly, on this introduction to these free tools, I want to show you the view area. Now, I can't find it here. If I go to the ribbon tool, you can go to view, and here you've got the split view. Now, this is useful, like here, where the questions belong to particular paragraphs, like this second paragraph has only one answer in here, but I'd like to see them both at the same time. And that's difficult unless you can split the view. Now, instead of, again, I'd have to jump between the comments to write and then the view. An easy way to do this is if you go back to the classic tools, right click this gray area and go to custom tools. Then just type in the word split. And the ones I add, you just get it and drag it to the top. Horizontal split, remove split, and finally vertical split. There is spreadsheet split, but I never use that. And so now, if I want to show this document, I prefer to get it on a single page view. So if you get a one page view, I don't know if it can do that here. No. You have to go at the bottom here, a one page view. And here I've got a one page view. And what you simply do is click the vertical. And now I zoom in to this text. I want to look at text B. Now, if you want it to be a perfectly good size, the best tool is this zoom tool here. Click on the first one, zoom in and out click on it, and then you can drag it around the B text, and it's perfectly fit in that size. The same with this. You can drag it around the text that you want to be as large as possible. Make sure you go to the hand tool so you can move it up and down. And so here is why this tool is useful. I want to show you the end result of this text I did. Here, again, you can see it. I put it on single view, vertically split, use the zoom in and out, and do the same here. Go back to my hand tool, and you can see here, um, pretend for question six, potential means of financing further research. And we can talk together, where does it paraphrase this? And here, further financial research in B is the answer. As you can see here, it says, we hope to apply for a grant to expand the study to two more. And there you find your answer and we can work together with the students. It's much more interactive 
and I know it's how they enjoy their lessons. Now, as quickly as I can, I'd like to introduce you to some of the unique features that it has. For instance, the QR code. So let's create this. Go to a new blank page. So click here if you're on the classic view or control N key shortcut. And simply go to add text, add QR code, drag the barcode, and I am going to add this URL, which is for this document. If it's too small or too large, simply click select comment and you can make it smaller, put it in an area. I'm going to make this nice and large so that you can actually now take a picture of it and it will lead you to this very document. Now to add audio, I do have a video made of how to add audio to Foxit Reader and a PDF Exchange Editor, and I'll give you a link above for that one. But just quickly, I'll show you here how I do it. Now it's much easier to do this in the ribbon version. Go to the comments page and simply add sound. Now this is an advanced feature, I'll say yes, and I'll simply add it to this corner here. Go find your file, I'll use this one. Please make sure you say show controls, otherwise it won't do it. And then click OK. Go back to my hand tool, and you can see there is the sound. And once I click save, we'll have stamps in the corner of this document also. Next, flattening comments. Why would you need to do this? Well, let's say I've got the pen and I need to go back to the classic version because then I can change the pen to black. And I wanted to, let's say, sign a document here. I'm going to use my pen. Imagine that's my signature. Now with a hand tool, that is still movable and copyable. But if I right click it and do flatten, obviously uh, I have to pay for that as well. It's the paid for function. I could do that here, or I could go to the comments and flatten here. And once I do that, it's no longer movable or editable. So that's the flatten function. The form, I'm not going to show you how to do. That's quite an in-depth thing. Probably none of us will ever make one. However, you may want to crop pages when you get them in case you've made your own document or you've taken pictures of a, a document and it's got edges. So let me show you here. Here's a writing that someone did. So I'll open up that writing and I'll, I'll crop that for whatever reason. So here's our document, and again, I like to change to the ribbon view for cropping. Go to Organize, and you can see here I've got the crop available. So you can also just click this window here and right click here and do crop. So I'm going to crop page. What's nice about this, it gives you the size of the page at the bottom. So I'm just going to do this. And you'll notice that on the left hand side, you've got the option to remove the background. But say we didn't, say we just cropped it. Okay. Yes, the evaluation. And there it is. But notice if I go back to the crop again, it still has the background on it. So in order to get rid of this, I can either click these buttons on the left or I can just click remove cropped content. And now when I go to crop, you'll see there is no other content. So that's a quick look at how to crop content. Now the resizing element comes when you want to, you can gather as many images as you like, drag it here. And you can see I've got a one page document. But this document is quite large. 
so you've got edges because I took a screenshot of a picture. So any images or pictures of content you take, simply go to the crop area. And here you can see this is a really large document, 600 centimeters by 900, really large. But first, before we resize it, let's just crop it. So let's get rid of this edge that we don't want. And I'm going to do it this way, removing all the edges and stuff. I'll, I'll click these four boxes. Yes, demo stamp, and it's done. And now if I go to the crop content, you'll see there is no excess images around the side. However, it's still large, 600. So what we need to do now is simply click resize. And you say standard and make sure it, you click scale. It must scale to this setting. Otherwise, you'll just lose content. Normally, you select all and go boom. And you can see it's shrunk. So now if I go to crop, you can see it is actually A4 size. And you can continue to crop even that. Do that. And now you have a image 210 by 264 instead of the A4. And that's quite nice. Now very quickly, I'm going to show you how it's better to view the comparing documents through this device. Remember, I've already done it in the Foxit AI. That has corrected it for me, but I'd like to visualize it in this uh, kind of PDF reader. So I'm gonna compare two documents. I'm gonna open up the uh, original here. And here I'm going to open up the fixed version. And then I select OK. And it shows me the results. However, there's all this blue marking. To get rid of that, just go to show only the results, not this row highlights. Get rid of that. And there you can see much nicer. As you can see, if I click on the jam, it shows you it changed it to jams. It's much easier to see the differences. As a teacher, you know, that AI function can correct the essays for me. I don't have to even do it. That's good news, eh? Now, finally, to show you how to use these three types of OCR, the first one is free, the selectable image. But if you want to edit the text and change the text, or if you want to get rid of the background and do it this way, you need to have the professional version, or you need to download a portable version of the old version eight, because that will allow you to do this. And I'll just show you what I mean. If I go to this text here, and I try to OCR it, I can only do searchable image. I won't get a stamp, but all I'll get is the searchable image. Normally you can change this if you go to file, preferences, and look at the OCR area. You normally have a choice. You used to have a choice, but not anymore. What you'll have to do is open the old eight version. And you can actually do that together with this one side by side. Watch, here is the eight version. And there you can see I'm running it side by side. I'll just open it up properly and show you help about eight version. But notice if I add that document here, And I want to, um, let's say, convert it to OCR. Here, I've got the ability to do all the types of OCR. Ooh, nice. Now, if you don't see this for some reason, make sure you go to File, Preference, OCR, and you have the choice of Default or Enhanced. If you go to Default, then it'll just print the mirror image without a stamp if you want to do that. So you might want to do that. And I'll show you for why now, because you can use enhance to do all your text editing and things. And before you get the stamp, we're just going to print it as a PDF and then use this default just so you can highlight the text. 
let's show you for this enhanced i have to show you it does something amazing so let's click ok now i have four of these available and the first one has already been done as text as you can see i can highlight this one i want to make it editable so let's go to ocr page number two and we're going to do the second one, editable. Uh, fix content, ignore existing text. No, I don't want to. So we'll just do that. Leave it as that. Okay, and let's see what happens. We get a warning about the demo stamp, but look at it now. It's all editable. Look how sharp that text is. You can do what you want. And it's even tried to keep the background images. See how it's done that fade? That's amazing. Now, what's more amazing is when it gets rid of the color. Let's try it on page three. In fact, if you go to options here, go to thumbnails, I can just drag that page down next so you can see both of them together. You can see this one and you'll see page uh, four. So let's do it to page four, OCR. This time we're going to OCR, find page content. Make sure we say page four. And wham, look at that. It's got rid of nearly all the colors. Remember, you can still get rid of objects. If you go to the home page, you have edit. And you can edit text as group. So here, if you say edit them as a block, and you can see I can move, edit them as a block. So I could move this block around, do weird things. Or I can edit not as a block. So what you can do is click on text and say not as a block. And now if I zoom in, I can edit all content and each word is an individual item. So now you can do that, which is quite amazing. And also you can get rid of, what happens if I delete this? Now the question is, has the text been deleted? Yes, I think that was an image. So, but you can get rid of this image, you know, and you can edit the text. Sometimes words uh, go a bit wrong. You can check the spelling and everything. Now, before you go away, while well, you're amazed by this, yes, if I click uh, save, the stamps will appear, as I warned you. But you can always, now that you're happy with this, you can always just click print and print as a PDF. I want to make sure it's auto-centered. There we go, we've got everything. Auto-centered, bits of print and margins. There we go, print. And I will print all of it here. We'll call it AAA so I recognize it. There's our AA document. And if we open it up here, you'll see there are no stamps. You've still got the text, but without stamps. However, you can't really edit it now. So what you need to do is because we can't use the text tool, yeah, it's all been flattened. But what we can do if we want to highlight it, simply go back to preferences, OCR, OCR default, apply. And now when we convert OCR, it says searchable image only. And we're going to say do that for all the images. Okay. So it's going to OCR everything. There's not enough memory. Uh, close. Let's do medium. I did it high. Let's do medium. See if it can do that. Okay, it was a bit too delicate for it. And now you can see I can actually, if I go to the comments, highlights, I can actually highlight text now. Everything's become legible. It hasn't become editable. It's just become, um, how can you say, markable. You can mark it. You can't really edit it. For that, you would need the stamps or the pro version. 
just before you go, I want to show you how the newer version of the OCR, if you do decide to get version 10, like here, I've got version 10, which I've paid for, and it's really worth the money because watch what it does to this text. This text is almost illegible and you could never photocopy it. So let's see what happens if I decide to go to documents, OCR, and I'm going to make it create a new page so that we can compare it. In fact, why don't I just do this? I'll just double up this document here and I'll say OCR this second version. So I'm OCRing these two pages, OCR, selected page, uh, and let's go. We don't need to create a new document, we're doing it here. Wow, just look at how well it's done that. Now I'm going to put that page side by side with that one. I'm going to put these side by side. Let's remove that. Just look at the text. Sure, that text didn't come out well, but we can fix that very easily. But if you look, maybe I should do um, the horizontal split would be better. Because if you look at this text here, compared to this text here. It's brilliant. And here's where it's darkest and most difficult, number 65. Let's go there, 65. Look at that. Count the number of bees that went into a certain kind of orchard. Count the number of bees. It's just, it's just brilliant. It's just absolutely brilliant. And as for this stuff, you can really just edit this, edit the text. You can edit the text like this, or you can edit objects. So you can just edit this as an object. What's the word it should be? Doing what comes. Okay, make that a bit larger. I'll just stretch it out. And as for this one, these are all different images. You know, I could just write my own text. Or if I go to change the text, just change this text to naturally. There you go. And now I have doing what comes naturally. All the text has been corrected. And even this, which was at an angle, has been put straight. And, you know, now if I wanted my students to do this text, I could just print that. We can do it online or in person. It's just mind blowing. That alone is worth the money for buying this PDF reader. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've been blown away as I have. And if you've got any questions, ask me about how to do certain things because I've only touched on the edge of what power this has. So thanks for watching. Give this a like and I'll see you on the next video.